Hello everyone, Shadefire here, and welcome back to Let's Play Maneater. This is episode 10. So last time we fought Scaly Pete and we took his other leg, as well as his son. Though that wasn't directly our fault. Actually, you could kind of say that was directly Kyle's fault, since he did pour the gasoline and light it. But Scaly Pete is out of the picture for the moment. And before we can check in on him again, we're going to need to do this Pinniphead Problems mission and then fight the Apex for this area, which I would guess is a Great White, considering this section is called the Great White Way. <laughs> but uh, we got a landmark over here, so let's hit that before we head out. And also, if you can see here, I completed basically all the collectibles I couldn't get before as a non-elder up here. So we now have three areas 100%ed, and Sapphire Bay is just the revenge mission there. And then Prosperity Sands, I got all the collectibles as well, except this landmark. So you can see, the fully upgraded Shadow Body doesn't look too different. But I'm hoping we get a Bioelectric Body soon as well. Alright, where's this landmark? Just in this little cove here. Oh, there's a shadow tail. Praise bar owners toss their Polynesian-inspired decor into the Gulf, where their kitschy charm is completely lost on native marine life. Also, we haven't been able to do photo mode for a while, so let's take a look at our shadow shark here. I've got everything except the teeth set as shadow right now, which is not really much, I guess, since we only have three parts. But now we have the tail, which is our first tail mod. So let's head back to the grotto and we'll equip that, see if we can upgrade it, and then continue on with our missions. Even for sharks, it's important to create personal time for sober self-reflection. This evolution allows you to launch a ball of poison from your tail when you tail whip. Okay, so now we have a projectile attack? <laughs> the shark is just getting weirder and weirder. Kind of just adds like a cap on top of our tail. Alright, we can upgrade it once. And then we're gonna need more protein. So now the tail is <laughs> even bigger. I mean, this thing already has a pretty big sickle-shaped tail. Well, I guess not quite sickle-shaped, but very long tail fin for a bull shark. Alright, so we want to go this way. There's a revenge mission we can hit on the way, just to get it out of the way. Which is... straight ahead. See, I think we're coming up towards the end now, even though it feels like, plot-wise, we haven't really had much resolution. It's like we fought Pete after he killed our mother and kind of got revenge on him. I mean, he's not dead yet. But we don't have much going on aside from that. It's a very personal shark versus man struggle. I think I just sent somebody into space. Another shark. Also, I... You can see I almost leveled up my infamy to level 6, so that we wouldn't have to do that on screen. Look how much air we have now as an elder with Amphibious. Don't know nothing about no raves. Are you throwing a fatal door on the beach at night? You just ask him to get bit. You know, it's very normal if you're gonna rave on the beach that a shark will leap out and devour you. That's just how it works. Maybe this game is secretly set in the Cabela's universe where, you know, all wildlife wants to murder all humans. I really should do a playthrough of one of those dangerous hunts games, because they are ridiculous. <laughs> really? I mean, if you're gonna come at me, you're gonna end up in the mouth. That's just how it works, Shark. Alright, so we got pinnipeds, and we've got humans. Let's go for the easy prey first. Wow, stairs really mess up the shark's land ability. I did not even move my mouse there, he just flew off, or she. Oh, 
You can tell our bull shark is female because she doesn't have claspers on the bottom of her tail. My ex's folk dog did voted painted sails. But, you know, so do a lot of other New York couillons. We're gonna take this great white and we're going to rid ourselves of it. Uh oh, it slipped away. I was gonna launch it into a building. Now it's their problem. Eat some seals. I don't want to see this projectile, actually. Let's jump. Oh, well, <laughs> that's really fast, so I don't know if I'm going to be able to alt F2 that quickly. I wish you could set it to a more convenient shortcut. Yes, it's quite beautiful here. Unfortunately, bull sharks can't see color. And thus, all the color in this game is wasted. The powers of society have retaliated with deterrent action. But mankind is ultimately impotent to stop Mother Nature's vengeance. If only that were true. If only there were forces of natural destruction that would get revenge against us for our exploitation of the world. Alright, so we got an apex here. Does it say what kind it is? The Great White is called the King of the Ocean, and boy, they never let you forget it. Yeah, they get all the credit. They're like the lions of the sea in that they get all the attention as predators. Then again, Great Whites are considerably less Emperor lazy than the lions. Team. The Great White. Doesn't really look very unusual, though. Nope. Photo mode is now broken again. What a shitty fucking implementation. Shooting balls of goop at it. Wow. This apex is deadly. <laughs> I mean, it is a great white, so it's not going to be that quick the compared to, like, the Mako. Fullness of its awesome prehistoric. Are you talking about us or the great white? Oh, I guess it looks like that because it's all covered in our poison goop. These people are completely unaware of the legendary battle going on below them until they become a part of it. Great White is still one level bigger than us. It's not really doing much though, this is like the saddest Apex fight. Hey, I'm trying to do a dodge, but it wasn't even really doing the lunge attack. Great White is often referred to as the king of the ocean, which gives it a skewed understanding of the role of a monarch in modern society. Well, that was easy. So now we can check on Pete and see how he's doing with his second missing limb. For some reason during that cutscene, I thought we ate both of his legs, but after editing that episode, I was like, oh no, it's just one. Sorry. All right, we got another revenge mission here that will do. Bull shark is unaware. A noose around its neck tightens thanks to a crack team of shark hunters. There's just so much floppiness going on now that we're this big. The shark has even less bones than a normal shark, which has no bones. Is that a target over there? The one human who swam all the way out of the way? Alright, we are gonna go after these hunters so we can get our next bounty. And 
whatever mutation they can give us. I like this beach you and me. Got a lot of nice looking wealthy women. Yeah, there's a court order says I can't be within 200 feet of the beach. But you can see a lot with a good set of binoculars. Pete just being a fucking creep sitting out here in his boat staring at the beach with his binoculars. Alright, well, before we check in on Pete, I guess we'll do the boss here. It's possible that this shark merely mistook its victim for some sort of injured or disabled fish. But it's unlikely in this particular case. The corn fed Colossus, Butcher Boy Brady. That's just a giant cylinder that says dynamite on it. <laughs> Alright. I'm assuming he's here. I would like to get his dynamite, but it's really small and hard to grab compared to, you know, the shit from the boss fight. Like, I tried to grab it there, but it might actually be too small to pick up. Got some more divers. I still feel like they're in the wrong profession. Like, oh, you're good at diving? Well, you can jump in the water with the shark that's killing people while we shoot it from above and throw dynamite at you. Ooh. Caught that dynamite with my face. There's Butcher Boy. Bioelectric body. When caution to the wind, the big fish escalates its battle against Port Clovis. Infamy rank six, which has a fancy icon. All right, now let's check in on Pete. Nope, can't do it while they're hunting us. All right, down we go. So now we got a bioelectric body, which is probably going to look pretty neat. As well as a bone tail. Also, that burn is pretty nasty. I think... I think that shard sticking out of our face, too, is the uh, piece of Pete's dad's spear. A breeze would be nice. right under me. What's this? It's vital that we extract an absolute maximum of resources before we cross Earth's apocalyptic threshold. Oh, it's a Poseidon statue. I just thought that was like an underwater palm tree, and I was like, the hell? You're gonna tell me this is not a landmark, though? Never mind. Underwater castle. Oh, it can be anywhere. Coastal risk analysis reveals that someday, someone here is going to get a sizable check from the National Flood Insurance Program. Also, some people-sized statues of people just walking around. What is this weird place? I guess this landmark will tell us what this is. A great way to discourage museum attendance is to put your museum underwater. No, that really didn't answer any questions of why there were all the people-sized statues. Alright, so this is a new area. We're not gonna look around here too much. I said we were in Caviar Key. I thought Caviar Key... Oh no, it's Crawfish Bay. Okay. I thought that was... where we were before. I was like, I don't think we can get there without busting down a gate. No one can tell what may be found in a shark's stomach. It's truly the ocean's garbage can. A day at the beach is a summer... Do we really need a loading screen there? ...without plenty of sunshine, sandcastles, and circarial dermatitis. All right. How you doing there, Scaly Pete? Pete's got a little What's tube leg. Fish fool. Pete, this is, can I ask you not to do it? I'm gonna get that shark. 
One way or another. It's, it's just that this is unnecessarily destructive. I mean, it's just one shark. There's a whole ecosystem. One shark? That killed my boy. Pete, look, I, I understand. Wanna keep tugging on this knot, you? I mean, is the cameraman now just trying to discourage him from doing his crazy shit? Look, Pete, I had to replace the guy that exploded with the last camera. Whale, hello there. I wonder if that means we're going to eat a whale. Is that gonna be our next apex? Alright, so now we want to go to Caviar Key, which we haven't really touched on. And again, hit a loading screen there. Coastal overdevelopment creates a riskier, more complex local environment. Oh man, is this a SeaWorld equivalent? Welcome back to Jaws Unleashed Episode 1. Except... The orcas seem to have escaped. Maybe that's why there were or orcas nearby. There's no one here to watch my debut. The sad part is this right here is way bigger than any actual orca tank. They don't get anything near this size. Hmm. This is just gonna be more collectibles. An insatiable fish. The bull shark is nine tenths appetite. I mean, this is all stuff I can do off-screen, this collectible stuff, but I still like to check out these new areas and where they lead to. Orcas do enjoy playing with toys, but not half as much as a day-old seal carcass. That's not true. They like playing with live seals. Like to toss them up in the air and then bat them down with their tail. And then eventually eat them. But that's kind of what happens when you have an intelligent apex predator. <laughs> they gotta entertain themselves somehow. The shark uses lipids from high-fat fare like this to help fuel her reign of terror. Wow, there is a lot of tunnel running through here. Some sharks are scavengers, indiscriminately consuming anything that's vaguely edible. Emphasis on some sharks. There are a larger number of sharks with very specific diets. Like some that only eat mollusks and rays. Alright, so I haven't really spotted any new wildlife in this area. One of these glow caves. I mean, with these areas being is a driving force a fair bit smaller than the ones we've been to already, it's not going to take long to get through these collectibles. Appetites. The shark's sole aim is to eat and evolve. Like Prosperity Sands, it did not take me very long to collect all the remaining collectibles. Okay, so the grotto is this way. Kind of getting back into the bayou in this area. I mean, the bayou is right above us. And I suppose that's the gate from the start of the game. What is this? Big fin. Just a monster truck we leave sitting out here in the middle of the swamp. After losing to King Crush in the 2011 Monster Mania semifinals, Big Fin stepped away from the limelight for a simpler, more natural way of life. And again, we need something durable to throw at the switch, so... There we go. Another shortcut open. Though, considering we have fast travel, I don't really know what the point of those shortcuts is. 
right, there's the buoy. So let's head down. Oh, alligator. We just have to make sure to rub in our dominance with alligators after the, the start of the game. The grotto enables the shark to approach the world really? with greater confidence and effectiveness. You're going to intrude on my peaceful grotto? That's what you get. All right. So we got some new mutations. Let's see. Bioelectric body. When activated, this evolution gives you the lightning burst ability. Cloaks you with a lightning aura, electrocuting anything that comes near. And it is an electric blue. So that also uses fat, which means we can upgrade it a bunch. I guess all of the electric abilities use fat. Wow, that is cool, but also a little over the top. And now we've got weird tentacles coming out of the sides. Those are our lightning organs. Alright, so here's our Mega Electric Shark. 30% projectile damage resistance, 30% electrical damage resistance. What does electrical damage aside from us? Are we going to run into a uh, electric eel even though we're in the wrong continent for that? So we also have this bone tail, which again is just kind of a cap of bone. 30% splash radius. Tail whip damage, tail whip force, ramming damage. Well, I don't know which one of these we should use. I mean, I guess I'll just stick with this because it's upgraded and I don't have enough minerals to upgrade the bone tail. They do seem to be the hardest resource to get because there's only like one animal that gives you minerals. All right. So I guess we'll stick with the electric body and let's put the fins that match with it so we are this very blue shark. I guess you could say we are electric blue at this point. So, what are our missions in this area? Population control for turtles. Population control for... Uh... Humans. That are in that park we were just at. And... Destroy and escape Orca. Casanita. Well... Might as well put it out of its misery. It doesn't have a pod to go back to. Oh, speaking of orcas. I mean, we're still one level lower, so we can still get eaten by the orca. But not easily. Ow. Okay, you have to go first. I'm waiting for the orca to strike. Alright, it's stunned. Go for it. <laughs> I activated my lightning power, which apparently also activates guitar riffs. Time to rip and tear. Wow, this orca is just getting bullied. With all these- oh, speaking of getting bullied. <laughs> With all these lightning powers, we can stun pretty well. Look at those deep gashes. 
Unfortunately, the orca is not as fearsome a predator on land as a shark. Alright, so we bullied that orca, so the other one shouldn't be a problem. However, it is going to be an even higher level. I'm pretty sure, though, that there's never a point in time where we need population control on turtles. They're not really a type of animal that exploded. <laughs> Bad news for seagrass, great news for orcas who enjoy torturing and eating them. I mean, seagrass, you know, it's not limited. All right. Ow. So the orca is just over this little rise. The Makos are still super aggressive. Like, compared to the other sharks we've run into since, like the Great Whites, they are way more, like, gung-ho to attack us. The bull shark demonstrates the importance of getting enough minerals in her diet. Okay, so we hit level 30, and it says visit Grotto, so we, are we gonna get even bigger than Elder? Are we gonna become Eldest Shark? Okay, so there should be a hunted orca around here. What's this? Secret underwater research facility. The accelerating destruction of the Gulf has occurred in tandem with a wholly humanized view of progress and development. You know, this looks like a Subnautica base, and I'm pretty sure that's intentional. Like the, you know, those are the the rooms, and there's the big room, and there's the observation dome. No one knows who built this mysterious underwater base, but odds are, they probably own a Nehru jacket and a Persian cat. Evil scientist laboratory. Where is my orca at? Oh, I went too far. Should be up here somewhere. That uh, looks like... Oh, it's a Mako. Black and white and dead all over. Where is... Oh. All the way over here? Really gets around. Ooh, that's a big orca. As we face impending resource scarcity and declining living standards. Also an odd pattern. And in the meantime, there's still a place to get a good bamboo version of a sun. Yeah, so orcas can just bat you with their tail. <laughs> But we actually have the advantage now that we're in deeper water than when we fought that first orca. Sure, we could avoid catastrophic risks for future generations, but then we couldn't have 4x4 four four pickups with 5.7 liter V8 engines. After years of eating the same meal of frozen herring and fish fingers, Casanita just wants her favorite comfort food, raw shark liver. And instead... She feeds the shark. I wonder if we can get on top of that container ship there. Not any reason to, just curious if we can. You know, just cause a nice detonation. Gas line, no smoking, no shit. I guess that's gotta be the case, right? There's got to be some pretty heavy no-smoking rules on a gas liner ship. I keep fucking up the jump. There we go. Of course, there's never anybody on these ships. <laughs> Whenever you jump on a ship like that, it's just empty. It's just set dressing. Alright. So our next mission... We got a hunt mission here. That's a cool looking great white. Weird 
like striping going on. I mean, the Great White we fought before might have also looked like that. I didn't really get a good look at it while we were brutalizing it out of existence. The idea that shorelines belong to the public comes from Roman Emperor Justinian, but only because he wasn't able to consult with the Association of Resort Developers' eternally wise lobbyists. Port Clovis City Council never misses an opportunity for cross-franchising. Are those... Yeah, those are Killing Floor 2 characters. You got... Oh, I don't even remember half their names now. But Mr. Foster, right there in the middle. I don't remember them because I only ever use like one character, and it's Clastic Masterson. All right, let's dive right in on our target. Let's travel back to the grotto and see what happens. The shark is now a mega shark, often referred to by scientists as the 64 ounce gas station soda of large marine predators. I don't think that's a real size. We can't just become the mega shark because then we can't fight ourselves. 6.8 meters. Massive, mate. All right, so let's see, where are we going next? We need to do one revenge, two more population control. You know the drill by now. You know what we gotta do. Always go for these opportunities. This is level 42 boat. I'm hoping maybe we'll get a head mutation when I do the collectibles for the last area. Boat down. So we got a mission that's right in here. Turtles in a small pond. This is going to be brutal. Wait, is that the right one? Yeah. Like, oh no, there's a level 10 Mako in here. Also, how are these turtles even surviving in this tiny puddle with this many of them? It seems more like they're trapped. Remember, Mako, I'm not in here with you. You're in here with me. For as long as I choose to be in here. And now, you're not even in here. Oh no, he bounced straight back in. Alright, and our last one is up here. More turtles. They really don't give you a lot of interesting population control missions, but I guess they wouldn't be population control if we were just taking out predators entirely. They would be hunts instead. Um, okay, we want to swing left. We still haven't actually seen what's behind that fortress gate, right? In the bayou. This mineral supplement wouldn't be necessary if this shark ate a more nutritious, well-balanced diet. 
Okay, yeah, so we're not actually getting experience anymore, which means this is as big as we're gonna get. Makes sense. I mean, how many times can you get bigger before you are the biggest? The predatory scavenger is often quite content to dine on whatever wastes fall to the ocean floor. Though it's interesting, because that means that we will never be big enough to eat some of the predators if they're higher level than 30. You know, they'll always be big enough to fit us in their mouth. I wonder if I'm over-leveled because of, like, because of getting those collectibles. Adult Makos often feed on juveniles, primarily due to a deadly combination of wage stagnation and rising childcare costs. Okay, so, spin it around. We got a double mission over here. So yeah, I'm enjoying this game. I just don't think that, you know, I don't think it'll be a bad thing when we finish it. Because there is a lot of repetition in here just to keep you busy. Which would be fine if I was playing this on my own, you know? It's not like I'm not enjoying doing this stuff. It's just, in terms of doing it on video, you're seeing a lot of the same thing. Just with me getting bigger. <laughs> Like, at this point, these Mako Sharks are just like a notice-me-senpai kind of thing. The most Yandere of sharks. Oh, the Hunted Hammerhead. See, that one looks cool, too. The Hunted ones have good skins, it's just you don't really get a chance to look at them, especially when your photo mode has been disabled forever. I wasn't done with you. Alright, so our Apex mission is Killer Queen, which means it's probably a killer whale. Interesting fact that I feel like most people still don't know, and I even incorrectly said it in the previous episode, but... Orcas are not actually whales, you know, killer whales are not whales, they are the largest members of the Delphinidae family, which is the family that includes all oceanic dolphins and porpoises. So they're not whales at all, and are often incorrectly stated as such. But that's kind of the fault of the people who confusingly named them killer whales. Recognize that the sea and land is transitory. It also doesn't stop them from eating dolphins. As there is lots of specific populations of killer whale that eat dolphins. And there are others that don't. There are some that dolphins are not afraid of and will just hang out around. I also found out recently too that they're building a killer whale sanctuary here in Along Canada on the east coast. 78 mile coastline, there are 35 miles of sandy beach only six of which aren't owned by resorts, individuals, or homeowners associations. All right, so I think we're gonna start off the next episode with the Orca, and we'll call this an episode of Maneater. That's pretty good. I think we're making good progress. Again, we are 83% done with the story, so I expect maybe like two more episodes, especially when I'm not doing the collectibles on screen. So yeah, I think we're, we're nearly done with Maneater, which is good because I have dinosaur games that I need to focus on as well. And it'll keep this game kind of neat and trim. Anyhow, I've been Shadefire, this has been Maneater, and I hope you'll join me next time as we continue to eat literally everything we encounter. Till then, take care, folks.